got out my chicken figurine. I've got a few of these. I even have a rooster with a big tail. So this one held this way because it's close to me and I would be looking down at it. And then there are some rocks, but I'm just going to let them happen on their own. The turkey is a white turkey. That's good because he'll, he'll stay back and the rooster will get most of the attention. All right, so I'm gonna start out with a neutral that will granulate nicely to get a lot of texture on the ground. What I often like to do in picking out my, my primary colors is I look to see what pure pigments I'm going to use. Very warm red on the rooster's comb and wattle. I, I'm gonna go with a raw sienna. That's a good granulating color. And then for the blue, maybe I'll use a cobalt turquoise light. As I mix it, I add more water and so I'll have more volume here. That's cobalt turquoise light, raw sienna. And then this powerhouse red. And I'm gonna use a big brush, clean water. I am going to paint around the rooster because he's the main attraction, uh, the barn white. This will give a nice silhouette to his head. I'm gonna lay the, the water down and try to leave some little areas of white. So it's not completely covered. I think I want his turkey's legs to stay white. And now I'm going into my mix. So it's already separating, which is really cool. Just don't want to get hard edges. So I keep dipping my brush into some clean water and back into my mix. And I'm running out of my mix. And I'm going to add more water as I go up here. I'm going to take a smaller brush, maybe a little cerulean instead of this little turquoise light, just for a little detail back here. I want this to be very mottled. This is that cerulean. Now, I don't care about blooms. This is a shadow here. And then a little spatter with just clear water. So I'm getting these little blooms. I'm gonna mix cad scarlet and cerulean. Oh, well, that's a nice color. I'm gonna take my atomizer. And now I'm gonna take a stiff bristle brush and I'm just going to make horizontal strokes over my spatter. So they're not all polka dots. I'm just painting around some dry areas to make rocks, pebbles, little spritz here. Okay, I'm going to put a little blue sky in over here. And I'm going to use, I think I'll use cobalt for that. Okay, so this will be my far away green, cobalt and raw sienna. And it's going to be nice and blurry where it meets the sky. Green, maybe a touch of sap just to make it greener with cobalt. These are pine trees. I'm going to add a little, uh, maybe a little uh, ultramarine color. So it's good to have a variety of greens when you're putting in a bunch of trees. Bring some trunks down. So even though they're trunks, I'm not going to reach for some brown. As long as you just have to be dark. And see how I'm leaving little 
little bits of air coming through here and taking just a wet brush. Well, I had a lot of fun up here in this corner. I'm happy with my little landscape. He's kind of a ragamuffin turkey dragging my brush on the side to get a little bit of a dry brush effect here. I'm gonna dilute and then I'm gonna drop in the strong cad. This is a cad red. All right, I might start with the comb on the rooster. So I, I'm not starting with dense pigment here, even though I want it to be very bright. I'm wetting it with a more dilute mix, and then I'm going to drop in the strong pigment while it's wet. So this way it's not all the same value and intensity. You don't see it in this picture, but in some of the other pictures, maybe a little bit there, you see this teal green color that's, um, I think uh, Windsor green is going to be a good color to have on hand for that. So I'm going to put that in my mixing tray. I'm going to try it with some alizarin crimson. Ooh, yes. Okay, that's what we're doing. So we get a cooler, blacker black. So Ooh. this is alizarin crimson and Windsor green. So I'm just going to show you those pure colors. So those are the two colors that I mixed to get that black. And it's a great combo. Get out my burnt sienna. I'm going to wet, I'm gonna wet this part of the bird with clean water. I'm seeing highlighted areas. I'm going to take a little bit of this alizarin crimson I put in my palette and add it to my uh, burnt sienna right on the page. I might even, I'm just going to dip it into a little mineral violet for a dark up here. So I really like the change in hue. Okay, I'm going into my alizarin crimson Windsor green combo to get my dark. I'm leaving it a little dilute here in places. So I'm varying uh, the proportions of the green and the alizarin where I see a little iridescence. Now I'm going to put in another section of, of this intense reddish brownish color. Now I'm going to sculpt out a few of the feathers that are reflecting the light. Now I'm doing a, trying to get that teal look on the feathers and then I could go over again, putting black in. shadow. I start with it warm and then I introduce more blue. All the shadows in your painting don't all have to be the same color. It's more about the value. 